Hello my friends, welcome. I'm Dion, so glad that you're here and I really hope this finds you well. If not, I hope that this will help. So in times when perhaps we might not be able to see the rainbows, stay with me here, um, maybe we can create our own rainbows if you know what I'm saying. We are gonna get into the side body today by making waves, rainbows. Okay, I need to think of another analogy. Let's start on hands and knees. Feel welcome to have a block handy, prop party if you want it, but no pressure. So we'll start on our hands and knees, and first of all, get into a comfortable position. So for most bodies, that tends to mean shoulders over the wrists, there or thereabouts, hips over knees, so play with that. Play with the distance between your hands, between your knees. And then from here, just experiment with finding a neutral spine. So that's gonna be different for all of us. And it might help to kind of sink and press through the chest. So letting the chest sink down, letting it round, and then finding somewhere in between. So from here, see if you can kind of lift the navel a little bit, lengthen out through the back of the neck. And you're gonna take your left ear towards your outer left hip. There or thereabouts. And what we're doing here is side stretching. And you're gonna come out with that and then try that on the other side. Right ear towards outer right hip. And then swap sides again, see if you can narrow the distance between your ear and your outer hip. And try it on the other side as well. I mean, purposefully vague, a trick one of my teachers taught me. And then find center. All of this is just language and labelings and it's all kind of ambiguous, but the key really is to sense what it's like in your body. So when you're creating your own rainbows, you're starting from your own uh, golden pot. This is terrible. Anyway, <laughs> from here, you're gonna take that side stretch again. And this time, see if you can lengthen out through the right side body as you shorten the left side body. And then try that on the other side. So you're kind of puffing out through the sides. Then find neutral and then come to sit either on your heels or find hero pose. At this point, you might use your block. So from here, feet slightly wider than the hips, knees kind of in line with the, the front hip points and just take a moment there, press the tops of the feet down. All right, and let's try a different kind of rainbow. So take your right fingertips to the floor and then inhale, reach the left arm up and maybe over. If it reaches over, you can bend the elbow and catch the head, and then use the weight of your head to find the opening on the side body this way. So the whole rainbow thing, does that actually make sense? We're just kind of creating these arcs, these shapes. Rainbows are actually spheres, or they can be kind of any shape, really, when you think about it. So we just work with what we've got, try not to worry too much about how it looks or getting this kind of perfect idea and instead just really tap into sensation. Feel free to turn your head here to see how that feels. And then on, you, on your inhale, you're gonna come all the way up, release your hand, take it over, and then into the other side. So reaching up, creating that rainbow. It might just feel good to sort of hang out here. That feels great. If not, catch the head, and then use the head to create the space. And then just be mindful too that you're not sinking too much into the left side body. Try and anchor through that right seat. And then maybe curving in. And then rising up as you inhale. Release that. Come forward onto hands and knees. Just ease yourself out. You can take the block in front. And you're going to stay kneeling. So feel free to pad up the knees if you like with a blanket or fold your mat over or whatever. And you're going to step your left foot out. 
And you're gonna have the heel sort of in line with your right knee, something like that. I've got uh, my right toes tucked, but I'm gonna play with it. You could just take the top of the foot to the floor. So if you've got a block, you could kind of set it up to the inside of that right foot if you want. I think you know where we're going. Reach the arms out. So a variation of warrior two, kind of casual warrior is what I like to call it. <laughs> if you like, you can take your left arm up, inhale, get long through the side body. And then as you exhale, reach, and then bend that elbow, rest it on the left thigh. Right arm comes up and over, and you can turn with the palm down, you can play with that. And as opposed to turning just from the wrist, see if you can let that reverberate from your fingertips all the way up through the elbow, right into the shoulder, so you can really get that sense of broadening through the back body. And then feel free to turn the head in any direction that gives you the most space. For me, I find turning down for what, looking down a bit, <laughs> helps me. And my left elbow is kind of pressing down and forward. So I'm trying to stretch or lengthen towards the left side of the room. I'm ready to come up. Inhale, rise on up, swap sides. Feel free to set yourself up. This is a really nice one if you find warrior two or extended, hmm, what's, what's the actual in Sanskrit, I always forget. Utita Paz Vokanasana, is that correct? Been a while. Inhale, reach the arm up. Exhale, get long, and then rest. So we didn't do this on the other side, but of course, if you're feeling like I've got loads of space, you reach down for that block by all means. I'm gonna keep it kind of casual here and resting on my thigh. This feels like enough. And instead I'm gonna focus on using this hands as a kind of twerk. Is that the wrong use of twerk? where I'm, it's like a kind of signal for me to let that reverberate throughout the whole arm, into the shoulder and into the back, so I broaden through the back body, even though my chest is turning up. All right, so just staying with the breath, getting long through the back of the neck, soft through the front of the throat. All right, when you're ready, inhale, come on up. And then come into down dog. So take your time, find that foundation, and then rise up. <sighs> Let the dog feel spacious, even. And then you're gonna shorten the dog by bringing the hands a bit closer towards you, enough so that you can really get a sense that there's weight pressing through the heels. So the heels are rooting towards the ground, you're kind of anchoring in. And then from here, start to imagine you're kind of, well, rounding through the spine. So let the spine sort of round towards you. And then take the right hand, hover it. If it feels stable, reach it towards the outer left leg, anywhere that's accessible. And then pull on that leg, like it's like you're trying to pull it towards you. Enough so that the right elbow can bend, perhaps, and maybe take a little kind of twisty, rounding situation. <laughs> a wonky, tipsy, turvy dog. And then release that, find neutral. Take a breath. And then practice puffing up again. So it's like a broadening through the back body. You're rounding in. Left hand might be able to hover. Take it to the opposite leg. Grab the leg and it's like you're, you're getting enough traction to draw that leg towards you, but because you're grounding through the heels, there's resistance. And then with that resistance, let that bend the left elbow Keep puffing through the back body and maybe just take a little peek under your shoulder. So twisty, roundy, strange dog. And then release that, take a breath. Ooh, it's like taking a little shot. <laughs> Stretch out your dog again, walk the hands forward, spread out the fingers, spread out the toes. And then bend the knees, look forward, and then step the right foot forward, grab your block if it's nearby, and you're gonna pivot so that you stand between your legs in a half forward fold. So with your block, you can make this forward fold more or less accessible, ideally more. 
bring the toes to turn in a little and then see if you can really focus on spreading the toes ground through the inner and outer heel so get really clear there you'll know it when you when you uh, tap into it there's definitely a sensation when you begin to ground through the heels where you can start to feel this kind of energizing sensation drawing up through the legs and you might stay here or you could take a little back bend as you inhale lift the chest exhale and fold could be handy here if the block feels close to your head you could just rest it there and adjust as you need so first we find this center point and then inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, walk the hands over towards your left leg and then maybe you grab the outside of the left leg with your right hand and then maybe you take the other hand on top and then start to turn your chest towards that left leg. Inhale, get long. Exhale and fold towards that leg. Stay grounded through the heels. You can bend the elbows here as well if that helps. Not staying here for too long. I'm gonna release. Inhale, find center, walk the hands back. And then exhale, start to rotate to the left. Grab hold of the leg. Take an inhale, get long. And exhale, fold over the right leg bend the elbows here if that helps to give you more space and broadening through the back body nice and then release come back through center let's neutralize with a forward fold inhale lift the chest and exhale refold so feel free to walk the hands between the feet here. If you've got more space, you could flip the fingers to point behind you and keep walking the hands back. See if you can get really long through the sides of your body. And then find the hands underneath your shoulders. Start to bend the knees a little. Heel toe the feet a bit closer, maybe all the way to hip width distance apart. And then start to come down into a squat. So maybe the knees point forward, maybe they turn out a little bit. If the heels don't touch the ground, you've got a couple of choices. You could always roll up something, the mat or a blanket and put it underneath your heels. Or you could just take your block, put it behind you. I like this one. <laughs> and then sit on the block. So use that as the support. I find this really helps me to get that length through the spine. So if it helps you go for it. And as I said, toes can point forward or turn out, depending on what feels good for your hip joints and your knees. So for me, I'm gonna turn out and then bring my elbows in between with my palms together. So if that works for you, go for it. If your feet are facing forward, feet and knees facing forward, you might find it's more helpful to take the hands and just kind of hook them over the front of the knees. Either is good, but see if you can get nice and long through the spine now. So it's like you're kind of from your base being drawn up through the crown of your head. Lovely. And then from here, we're gonna come all the way down to the ground. So remove your block if you're using it, come to sit and then stretch the legs out. I'm gonna to turn towards you actually. And just as you did when you were doing your forward fold, you're really intentionally pressing through your heels. So do the same here. So think about inner and outer heels grounding. Hopefully you can even feel a sense that the legs are grounding. If that feels challenging, no, you can always bend your knees. You could fold up a blanket or use a cushion and just sit on it. So give yourself some height. So that's for you if you've got tight hamstrings. So wherever you're at, appreciate that. Take a moment, maybe sitting upright, maybe gently starting to walk the hands forward and pause here and just feel left side, right side. And then we're gonna very slightly start to create a mini rainbow here by moving a bit from side to side. So you might be upright and kind of moving a bit side to side, that's a-okay. Great, you're just shifting the energy. Maybe you're starting to come forward and making more of a kind of semicircle shape, making that rainbow. 
Nice. And then we're going to like add a little bit more movement here. So for familiar one, I'm sure I've made a video about this or maybe you've done this in class with me. So let's lean over towards your left leg. So as you do that, really just start to tune into the sensation in your right leg. And you probably start to feel that the toes want to turn in. So really let them turn in. It's the same with that left leg. You probably start to feel it kind of externally rotate. So exaggerate that and start to bend your knees. So if you're on a mat, it's going to get a little bit wild, but that's okay. <laughs> so you can really bend the knees if that feels accessible and interesting. Go for it. And then you're going to press out through the heels to find neutral. Notice that the toes are probably going to want to turn up. And then lean the weight towards the other leg. So just slow down the movement so you can really notice those little kind of details. And then start to bend the knees and draw them in towards you. So think the heels dragging towards your centre. Then press back out. That's the movement. Semicircle over to the other side. Bending, straightening, circling, creating this rainbow. Try not to worry too much about alignment or how you look or us needing to be the same and instead just embrace your own rainbow. <laughs> you can freestyle. Maybe you're kind of rolling all over the floor at this point and that's A-OK. -okay. You can use your hands to support you as well. It's totally fine. You could start to really get into it with the arms, kind of, I don't know what this is, like <laughs> painting rainbows, whatever works. Until you find a center point between your legs and maybe again, you're upright. Maybe you feel like, oh, okay, I've got a bit more space here. My hips feel a bit more lubed up. Perhaps I can come onto my forearms. Some of you might be all the way down. For me, this feels good. It feels most accessible. And I'm still kind of rocking a little bit left and right because that feels good for my body. So do what's good for you. Staying really active through the heels. So it's like the heels pressed down, like you're grounding. Just take a moment here, because I think sometimes we can often, especially with forward folds, be confronted with this idea of us needing to reach a certain destination. And that might be the same in life as well. There might be this pot of gold we're waiting for. Or something, you know, something that isn't quite here yet, or maybe something that we're waiting for. <sighs> maybe we're wishing something was a bit different right now. And I find that it can be really helpful for us to remember that we get to create our own futures, our own rainbows, our own realities to a certain extent. And so maybe we can imagine like new futures, maybe we can imagine our own unique kind of pot of gold, whatever you want to call it, for ourselves as we pause here. So instead of feeling like this has to be your deepest forward fold, instead perhaps we can think about just appreciating where we're at and maybe creating our own ideas about what our practice means to us, what we might want to call forth in our lives. Maybe it's something we want to create. Maybe it's just a simple appreciation of being here right now. And that's enough. So just take one more breath here. And on your next inhale, very gently start to walk yourself back up. Just take a moment at the top to feel if you were folding forward. I don't know about you, but I often feel so light after holding in that position. Suddenly there's more space. I hope you were able to touch that as well. If not, that's A-OK -okay as well. Take your hands to your inner knees and then use your hands to help lift and gently bring the feet in. And let's just bring the soles of the feet together. So some of you know this is my nemesis pose. So I'm going to sit on a block at this point. If I had a bolster or blanket, I'd probably use that. And then you can bring the soles of the feet together. 
And if you can reach for your feet, if that's that's accessible, go for it. And you could just give yourself a little massage here. If you can't reach your feet, that's okay as well. You could just hold your legs, whatever is giving you some space, but also kind of closing that um, lock. So creating this full loop, because the rainbow is the full sphere. And once again, lift the chest. Maybe you stay here. Maybe as you exhale, you fold forward. For me, this is enough, so I'm gonna hang up here, but you do you. And just pause. Just resting in that wholeness that is you. If you're folding forward very slowly as you inhale, start to bring yourself back up. Nice, and then wherever you are, just bring yourself into some kind of seat. You might go back into hero pose. I'm just gonna cross my legs. Maybe a little half lotus feels good. Yeah, feels good. Feels good for me. And then rest your palms on your thighs, and then depending on what you need, you can turn your palms up if you wanna receive, turn the palms down if you wanna ground. Maybe it's a bit of both. Hmm. And then maybe close the eyes, let the shoulders drop. And then just pause here, soften the belly, soften the front of the throat, soften the face, and then just tap in to your spine, from the base of your spine all the way up through the crown and beyond, just feeling that length and space. And then just appreciating what this magnificent vessel can do. Bring the palms together. Again, just closing the circuit, give yourself a bow. And here's to, you know, painting, creating, making your own rainbows. We do and make what we can the best with what we've got. Don't know if that made sense, but I think you know what I mean. So stay with yourself. I believe in you, I believe in us and these new futures that we're creating. Stay safe, look after yourself. I hope that felt good for you. Let me know how it went in the comments below. Don't know what that was. Thanks for practicing with me. Take care. Bye.